no fog, no light. Get below. Hello, Mr. Hammond. Well, Stuart, where is she? Why, uh... Stuart said there was someone who wanted to meet me, so naturally I... Half starved, too. Who is he? Named Richard Heller. Said he was a writer in Austria before the Nazis ran. Yes, and a good one, too. What are you going to do with him? I don't know. I'm stumped. He has no money and no passport. There is one possibility. Well. Oh, hello, Sally. I'm not talking to you. Any news yet? I still can't get Australia, but I'll keep after it, though. And he's been trying to fool me. Now, you tell me, how many more days to Melbourne? Four. Where are we now? Well, we're right about there. Then how can you be getting off the ship in the morning? I don't see anything but oceans. Karuba is a very small island. Doesn't even show on most maps. Matter of fact, it's right down. Well, I still won't believe there's any land there until I see you set foot on it. Why don't you get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you will? 4 a.m.? No, thanks. I'll just take your word. She certainly keeps her chin up. You know, she was in Rangoon when the Japs bombed it flat. Bar. Yeah, yeah. For you, Captain. Thanks. Yes? Yes. Okay, Tim. Bridge. Well, has the lady been here? Not yet. Oh. Thanks. But I've heard she's traveling on a British passport. <laughs> That's something. And she's on her way to see her brother in Australia, and her first name is really Diana. That's good. And she's not a missus, she's a miss. That's excellent. What's to be good, Heller? I don't know. You have no relatives? A few in concentration camps. What would you say to living on an island where there was lots of sunshine, books, and time to write? Are you speaking of paradise? No, I'm speaking of Karuba. It's only a prison colony, but... Prison colony? I happen to be the governor, and so I can let you stay there. It's not much to offer, but you're welcome. <laughs> not much to offer. For this, I'd do anything. Anything. Just go on writing the truth, Mr. Heller. To think that after all these years, I should find peace and freedom on a prison island. Mr. Hammond. We'll leave the ship together early tomorrow morning. Good night. Good night. Captain, what's up? I may have to call on you for help. You know these waters. I have a hunch we're near a Jap bombing base. It must be. The plane that came over last night didn't come from Shangri-La. Shangri-La? <laughs> now, I have a feeling it'll be back. You saw it last night. What did you think of it? I thought she was beautiful. Stewart. Stewart, the lady wants you. Oh, sorry, sir. A white lady, please. Yes, miss. A white lady. Stuart, just tell the mate to keep a good lookout. Looks like we'll have a man overboard. Stuart. Yes, sir. I don't believe Miss Bryce cares for music just now. Oh. Stuart, would you mind turning the music on, please? Oh, yes, miss. I'll turn it on again. Don't you find it rather hot in here? Stuart, please turn the fan on. Yes, sir. Stuart, the gentleman ought to know that it's rather cool in here. Oh, yes, miss. I'll turn it off again. Well, it is better, isn't it? You agreed at last. You know I've been trying to talk to you for five days. I know. I'm getting off the ship in the morning. That's why I'm still trying to talk to you, even though you haven't asked me to sit down. Please sit down. Thank you. Well, here's to a pleasant meeting and another one tonight at dinner. Are you sure you'd enjoy it? What? Not enjoy dining with anyone as beautiful as you? Shall I look at the clock? No, please don't. You see, I'm going back to a very bleak prospect, an island called Karuba, where the only woman is a toasted owl of a nurse. Why are you in such a hurry to get back, then? It's a prison colony. I'm the governor. Oh. Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Merrill Hammond. To be perfectly honest, I know who you are, where you're going, and why. 
Oh, you know all about me, just like one of your prisoners. Now, this isn't business, this is pleasure. I said to myself, here is a lady traveling alone. Why? Either she wants to find something, lose something. And what would I want to find? Adventure? Yes. And what would one want to lose? A memory. What's your guess? You want to lose the memory. Perhaps. I should like another cocktail. Steward. Yes, sir. We'd like another cocktail. The same? Yes. Of course. Yes, miss. You don't have to if you wouldn't enjoy it. Oh, no, it's, it's wonderful. What's it called? A white lady. When I'm on my rocky island, every evening at this time, I'll drink a white lady and think of you. And every time I see a clock, I'll think of you. Ouch. I'll go. Far? What? Long row ahead. Get your life preservers. Everyone stay below. Now don't be frightened. In this fog, you may not see us at all. May I ride in your lifeboat if we end up in a lifeboat? still holds. He doesn't see us. Last him. We're in for it now. Where could be coming from? This fog is a godsend. All clear. Looks like he didn't have enough gas to come out any longer. Did you hear us at all? There's a little machine gun fire. Bombs fell astern. We were lucky. I say we were. Now perhaps you can have your dinner if I can get the cook out from under the stove. <laughs> Outside, take a look. You know, even those convicts on Karuba hang on to life with everything they've got. You know, you don't sound like those heartless prison heads I've heard about. <laughs> don't judge me by the way I act on shipboard. Oh, I see. If I were on your island, you'd probably bark at me and frighten me and throw me into solitary <laughs> confinement. No, I wouldn't. Maybe we'll try sometime. Why not tomorrow? What? Oh, you're mad. You've said your brother doesn't get back to Melbourne for three weeks. Why wait for him in Melbourne? You know, Karuba's really a beautiful place. You can forget the prison. What would you do, reserve a cell for me? No, a bungalow. I built it myself. I don't tell me it was just waiting for me. You know, I think it was. This is ridiculous. Our supply ship, the Troga, gets there in eight days, then goes back to Australia. Why not be my big guest for the week? Are you really serious about this? It occurred to me this evening. About Karuba, I mean. Why should it be just a grim penal colony? Look what it means to a man like Heller. I've asked him to come and live there. You have? And it can mean something different to you. What? A chance to forget something. And to find something? I hope so. And when do we reach Karuba? At sunrise. There's very much time to pack. You're coming? I haven't made up my mind yet. Well, perhaps you'll decide in the morning. Perhaps. If it's late, I should go in. That's Heller over there. Would you like to meet him? Yes. Looks like he's asleep. I'm afraid Mr. Heller won't be with us on Karuba.
on, then line up negative. Right, face! this would make me if I were only in private practice. There'll be no damage. Boys will cool them off. Bryce, may I present my Lieutenant Governor, Mr. Kent? How do you do, Mr. Kent? And Mr. Henderson, my secretary. Bryce, I'm happy to know you. We all trooped down early this morning, waited an hour or more. The radio on the boat was silenced. We couldn't let you know we'd be late. How's everything? Men arrest us. Number 49 tried to escape, tried to get away in a canoe. Escape? We got him up. Mr. Henderson, will you take my luggage in? Yes, sir. I'll see you in about 10 minutes. Very well. The bungalow. Yes, sir. This is my bungalow. It hasn't been used for quite a while. The climate's pretty damp. Oh, Sonny. So glad to see you back, Mr. Hammond. Thank you. Sonny, this is Miss Bryce. She's going to stay here a while. So pleased, Miss Bryce. Thank you. Fix this still, Sonny, and get the porch furniture back and clean it up a little, will you? You bet. I get my broom. I fix the place so well for Miss Bryce. Thank you. Oh, so glad you meet me, Miss Bryce. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't been in here for a long time. Oh, this will be charming. Uh, excuse, please. Me think better clean inside first than outside. Thank you. Good. Strip all these covers off, Sonny. Open the windows and get fresh flowers for vases. Thank you. Pretty soon all the ghosts will be gone. Now who is going to lose that memory? I built this place three years ago. Shortly after I married Mrs. Hammond. Climate wasn't very good for her here. She died two months after I brought her. So I moved back to the administration building and lived with the men. I'm sorry. Well, we can't live with ghosts the rest of our lives. I'll tell you what, I've got an idea. Sonny! 
Sonny and the woman who cooks for us will take care of you. And at six o'clock on the dot, the four of us will arrive. What for and for what? Dinner. Kent Henderson, Dr. Brown, and myself. You'll love the doctor. Sounds like a celebration. It is. And tomorrow we'll have another, and the day after that, another. But you promised I could see the island tomorrow, every bit of it. Of course. Sonny, tell your mother to come over right away and help Miss Bryce and fix dinner. And Sonny, no cocktails. Thank you, please. I'll be here at five o'clock and attend to that myself. Don't argue with him. Throw him in solitary. Kent. People aren't machines, Kent. It's all right to be efficient, but there's no call to be inhuman. While I'm in charge here, I want that understood. I do my duty as I see it. Let's both see it the same way. Now, what about number 49? Number 49 was about 400 yards offshore when we picked him up. That, uh, that new searchlight worked excellently. Where is he now? In the hospital. Dr. Brown is attending him. Why the hospital? One of the guards shot him. Who gave the order to shoot? I did. The man was escaping, you know. In a canoe? Could have caught him in the motor launch in less than 10 minutes. I didn't think of that. Well, think of it next time. If there is a next time. Anything else? Yes. If you can defrost your face a little by 6 o'clock, I'd like you to have dinner at the bungalow. The bungalow? Miss Price is staying there for a week until the supply ship comes. Excuse me, Merrill, but if I were in your position, I wouldn't... If I were in your position, I'd worry less. Miss Price is my personal guest, and I want her treated with every courtesy. You understand? I think I do. Good night. Mr. Hammond, I'm so glad you're back. Well, I am. Yes, I see Dr. Brown? Yes, come right on in. Oh, hello, Merrill. Hello, Henry. How are you? Tired. Is this number 49? Yes. He's dying. He's hurt himself. Mr. Hammond knows about Cape. Does he know about the typhus epidemic, too? Typhus? Yes, I have 17 cases of typhus. Two have died and five are very apt to. I have to keep the rest cooped up like sardines in the barracks because Mr. Kent prohibits the use of this hospital for typhus cases. I want to protect our staff. Well, what's the difficulty? I can disinfect this entire hospital, but I can't spray every rat and sand flea that goes in and out of the barracks. What about you? Me? I'm so thick of an alcohol that I kill a typhus bug if he comes within six feet of me. I can't let Nurse Pauline die. She'd go to heaven and I'd never see her again. Can you isolate this ward with reasonable safety? If I don't get it, Kent won't. Bring the worst cases in here. Thanks. Oh, by the way, Henry, I'd like you to come up to the bungalow for dinner tonight. The bungalow? Yes, and clean up a bit, will you? I have a guest staying for the week, uh, Miss Bryce. She's a very beautiful woman, doesn't she? A beautiful woman? Here for a whole week on Karuba? What's that for? Well, I was just thinking your beautiful guest will be here for a week, and Pauline will be here for years. Mr. Hammond. Everything all right, Mr. Hammond? Yes, no? Thank you. Yes, everything's fine, Sonny. Oh, no, Sonny. Miss Bryce is going to sit there, and I want to look at her face. Excuse me, please. I thought Miss Pauline was going to sit here. <laughs> uh, cocktail glasses, son. Thank you. Maybe almost ready, sir. Fine, Laura. Good dinner tonight. Wonderful dinner, sir. <laughs> I wouldn't feel too badly about it, Doctor. What could a man like 49 possibly expect from life if he had escaped? His wife was undoubtedly taken up with another man years ago. That sums up what you think of women, doesn't it, Kent? Just conservatively. But you forgot to shave, sir. Observing little thing, aren't you? Love me, love my beard. Good evening, thank you. Shave. No. After I left number 49, it seemed rather trivial. He died half an hour ago. It's the first attempt at escape in two years. You told me if you work hard, you don't mind. Then things change after a while. They don't change. I work hard, and every night I dream of beautiful women. Hundreds of them. Good evening. Heaven help me. I'm beginning to see them now, even when I'm awake. And they talk to me. Miss Bryce, may I present Dr. Brown? Doctor, you're even nicer than I thought you'd be. 
I'll be right back. <laughs> well, what got into him? Oh, a white lady remembered. I hate to bring up official business, Miss Bryce, but do you know that we haven't examined your passport? Oh, must you? Oh, yes. We make an official record of each person who sets foot on Karuba. I can wait till tomorrow. You haven't seen much of Karuba yet, have you, Miss Bryce? No, and I want very much to see everything, especially the prisoners. I want to know how they live. Mr. Hammond promised I could do that first thing tomorrow. Certainly. Excuse me a moment. Sonny. Are you from Calcutta, Miss Bryce? Calcutta was only my last stop. I was in Paris until the war broke out. Your home in London? My home, Mr. Kent, is wherever I am. Are you married? No. Divorced or widowed? Neither. Mr. Kent, is this your usual cocktail conversation? Or is it an official interview? Because if it's official, I'd much rather be questioned by Mr. Hammond. I'm sure you would. Dinner's just about ready. Shall we start or wait for Dr. Oh, there you are. Sorry. In a minute, I thought you'd gone home to shave. Shave? No. I'm going to put on a tie. Shall we go in? Up to you, Doctor. Naturally. Is your coffee hot or iced? Coffee, Henry? Coffee for me? What? What beautiful arms. Visions. What's happening? They're trying to build up my practice. Inside. Attention. Attention. Yep. What are you doing out there? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? What are you doing outside the barracks at this hour? I was on the clean-up detail tonight. I heard the music. I like music. You frightened the lady. I'm sorry. Will you please forgive me? You can speak to us, not to her. That's enough. Take him back to the barracks. Report to Mr. Kent at 7 o'clock in the morning. Please don't punish him. He meant no harm. You'll be good enough to leave that to us, Miss Bryce. Go on. My apologies to the lovely lady. Yes. I'm sorry this upset you. It was just so unexpected. You were surprised at seeing convicts in a prison? That man, what did he do? Murder.
I can't believe it. Come inside. When I saw your right arm, I thought I'd gone crazy. I thought I was imagining it. How did you ever get here? I've been trying to find you ever since I got your letter. Damn, darling, two whores, not a word from you. I broke some rules, so they wouldn't let me write. I had to smuggle that letter out to you. It was good to know at least that you were alive. If you knew how I tried and tried to, and after the police gave up. I told them something must have happened to you in Madrid, but they wouldn't believe me. Police were right, for a change. I never got to Madrid. I was arrested on the way. What for? We won't go into that now, except that I'm innocent. You believe that, don't you? Oh, darling, you knew how I loved you. Why wouldn't you trust me? Why didn't you let me know at once? Oh, I... I lost my head. When I was arrested, I... I was afraid of a scandal. So I gave the name of Curtis. I didn't want you mixed up in it. I would have moved heaven and earth to help you. Sure you would. Look how you've come to Karuba. How did you do it? Oh, I was in Rangoon. I heard that Hammond was in Kolkata leaving for the island in two days. I flew to Kolkata and booked passage in the same ship. The rest was easy. Then he doesn't know anything about us? No. Good. What was that? Ah, those stupid monkeys. They'll drive a man crazy. I like to kill every one of them. Shh, shh. Don't, darling. How you've changed. You must have suffered. Two years of this. Eight more to go. I won't stand it, another woman, I tell you. I won't stand it for another month. Why was your sentence so long? What did you do? Kent said murder. Kent's a liar. I like to break him in half. Listen, Diana. I was attacked. Yes, I killed a man. But it was in self-defense. You believe me, though. I've got now. And you'll help me escape. I've got it all planned. But I need money. Give me the book. And here. Come in. Are you alone? Yes. Strange. I thought I heard someone talking here. You did. I was talking. To who? To Mr. Shakespeare. I'm not joking, Miss Price. Neither am I. I was reading Mr. Shakespeare aloud. Really? It may be true, then again it might not. I'm a guest on this island, but at the moment you're a guest in this bungalow. I'm sorry, forgive me. Good night. Mr. Kent, why do you dislike me? I don't. If I met you anywhere else on Earth... But here, I'm inclined to ask myself, officially, just what is this charming young lady doing on Karuba? My curiosity and Mr. Hammond's courtesy. Is that so hard to understand? There is someone out there. Who is it? Stop or I shoot? You do, you'll have a lot to explain. Oh, it's you? You shot me, George. You'd have to tell why and what you'd been doing here. You'd have some explaining yourself to do, Mr. Governor. That's very simple. I brought Miss Bice a detective story. I thought you might prefer it to Shakespeare's sonnet. Shakespeare's sonnet? Yes, don't you like them? Oh, yes, of course. All right, Miss Price. Good night. What was he doing here? Snooping. What? Oh, officially, of course. He couldn't believe I was reading aloud. He thought I was talking to someone. Talking to someone? Well, now, wait a minute. Supposing you had been talking to someone, me, for instance. What right had he to barge in? Well, you barged in on him. Well, that's different. I had an excuse. I brought a book. I also thought we might take a walk. The moon is beautiful. I always look at the moon alone. And perhaps I can interest you in the view from the back porch. Oh, no, no. Not tonight. I'm very tired from all the excitement. I understand. Good night, Diana. Good night. Oh, darling, I was so worried. You are wonderful. You got them both. You're winding Hammond right around your little finger. You don't mind, Dan? Listen, I have everything you can do. You said you needed money. Yes, lots of it. There's a tramp steamer due here day after tomorrow. Everything's arranged with the captain. He has a forged passport for me. Clothes. With his help, I can get to a safe port. He'd better not double-cross me. I'll get all I have.
Here. Only one thing. Only what? Be careful. Two days ago, a man was shot. Oh, he was a fool, using a canoe. <laughs> but even your plan is so dangerous. I gotta try it. I won't take this any longer, I tell you. I won't. We could wait. Maybe reopen the case and get a new trial. Really set you free. Reopen the case? Start a new trial? How long do you think that would take? Now, I'm going to be free my own way. I'm going to live like a man again. I'm going to get what belongs to me. Dan, what has this place done to you? Plenty. You don't think I could be the same after all this? Here, take this ring, too. But be careful. If you drop one word, I'm trapped. I'll be careful, but I'd give anything if you try the other way, the right way. But if you're determined, you can trust me. I know. You're wonderful. But watch yourself, especially around Kent. Get to Rio as soon as you can. Take the best suite in the best hotel. I'll find you. We'll make up for all this. You haven't forgotten, have you? No. I gotta go back now. Push me back. I do. I do. Sentry post. Sentry post. Gorman talking. Yes, Mr. Kent. Well, 129 was in bags for last inspection and... 30 minutes ago. Then check up again at once. Got a hunch. Will you check on 129, Curtis? Digging, Governor. Trying to hide something. Get it. Don't move. There it is. Yes. Tell the whole story? Let's see. Henderson, ask Miss Price to come in at once. Yes, sir. Curtis was apprehended on his way from Madrid in 1939. What about it? Last night, that woman said Ms. that she... Miss Price said. Miss Price said she'd lived in Paris a year before the war started. That was 1939, the same time that Curtis was there. There were five million people in Paris in 1939. Exactly. But these two show up in Caruba. Well, it still doesn't prove anything. I say that she was talking to him last night. She's here to help him, and she gave him those things. Can't you see devils? Good morning, Miss Price. Good morning, Mr. Henderson Coffee. No, thanks, Miss Price. Uh, the governor wants you to come to the office right away, please. What was all the excitement last night? A fire someplace? No, ma'am. That was the escape siren. One of the men escaped? Yes, that same convict, number 129, was caught out of bounds. Oh. What happened to him? Well, I really can't say any more, Miss Bryce. You'll have to talk to Mr. Hammond. Of course. Good morning, Mr. Kent. Why so grim? Good morning, Mr. Hammond. Good morning. Are these yours? Why, yes. Yes. And of course you hadn't missed them? A woman scarcely puts on her jewels before breakfast, Mr. Kent. 
The convict robbed your bungalow last night. Didn't you hear anything? Nothing. What? Oh, yes, I did hear something. Monkeys. Where'd you leave these? The money was in my purse. And where were your jewels? On the dressing table. And this ring, when did you take it off? I suppose when I went to bed. I don't remember. I remember. It was on your finger last night when I called, the last time. Oh, well, as I said, I don't think I... You were robbed, Miss Bryce, before you went to bed. You see, we caught the man with these things, and only a few minutes after Mr. Hammond and I left you. Now am I seeing devils? Anderson, bring 129 in. Take your hat off. Where did you get these things? I found it. Curtis. Miss Bryce give them to you? Are you crazy? Now we know you stole them. How did you get out of the barracks? I don't remember. I don't even remember how I got into the bungalow. I lost my memory. Shut up. Take him back. I'm very happy to see you again. Curtis probably went in the back way or through a window while Miss Bryce was reading. I don't know how he got in. I took the liberty this morning of checking the back door and the screens. They were all locked from the inside. As a matter of fact, Mr. Kent is right. I was a little uneasy before I turned in last night and I locked everything. There you are. Don't you think I better put these things in the safe? This emerald ring, for instance? Oh, no, I'll take them. It couldn't happen twice. 129 should be put in solitary. Yes, you're right. I hate to do it, though. Most of our typhus cases have developed in solitary. Typhus? Yes, I'll have Dr. Brown inoculate him at once. May I go now? It's a little warm in here. Yes, you ought to lie down. You're not used to this climate. Good day, Mr. Ken. They're London cable, sir. I took the liberty of cabling London to see if they had a record on Miss Diana Bryce. Calcutta had none. Turn it off. That sounded like good news, and that's rare these days. You look worried. Diana, about your passport. Yes. Kent Cable London, and the bureau there has no record of it. Why should London have a record? My passport is from France. I had it reissued in Paris before the war. Then I guessed right. You know, for your own safety, I should tell you to leave Karuba right away. I simply can't let you go so soon. Why for my safety? Typhus. This is the bad season. Oh, I'm not afraid. You know, I can't think of Karuba without you. And you've been here only one day. However, if you want to stay the week, I'll have to have Dr. Brown vaccinate you. I'll stay. Karuba's no place for a lovely woman. Karuba's no place for anyone who loves life. Well, let's get down to the doctor's office. And wear a hat. I mean, a hat. Come on, Curtis. That's far enough. Do you know Diana Bryce? No. Nope. You in Paris in 1939? Nope. You lie. It was then you left Paris to go to Madrid. Then why ask me? You know everything. Were you married in 39? Oh, frequently. Were you? You have my record. Did you give your wife an emerald ring? Dozens of them. What did you get in the bungalow last night? I flew through the window like a little bird. Which window? The bedroom. Where was Miss Bryce on the veranda? No. In the living room. And you were with her. That's enough. 
Thank you very much. Henry. Oh, good morning, Paul. Good morning. This is Miss Bryce. How do you do, Miss Bryce? How do you do? The doctor's very busy. No, I'm not. Good morning. Well, the miracle has happened at last. My dream has changed. I dreamt that I was ill and that you were my nurse. Huh. So wonder you didn't wake up dead. <laughs> <laughs> She's sweet. Take good care of her, Henry. I will. I'll see you later. Right. Well, Doctor, I'm your victim now. I'll be gentle. This arm? I hate to interrupt your treatment, Doctor, but you must sign these death certificates. Yes, of course. Excuse me. What numbers? Number 324 and number 46. Oh, yes. Antoine Latour and Joseph Steele. Just like that. A stroke of the pen, a man is crossed out. I prefer to think of them as pardoned. A man dies and he's free at last. Will it hurt? No, just like the prick of a pen. Oh, I can survive that. Don't forget, Doctor, you have a prisoner to inoculate too. Number 129. Oh, yes, of course. Well, be a good girl and go down and ask them to bring him up from solitary and take those with you and give them to Henderson for the main files. This is one day you might have phoned. Well, here I am, all ready for the worst. Your hand is trembling, Doctor. You're beautiful. I always thought the doctors were impersonal. One person just like any other. I thought so, too. Now, Dr. Brown. I thought I'd got over things like this. You're lonely. I've never met anyone like you. You haven't seen very many women lately. Ouch! If any other halfway attractive woman had come to Karuba, you'd be telling her the same thing. No. Doctor. Yes? I need help very much. What is it? It's dangerous. What is it? I want a man to die. That is dangerous. I don't want you to kill anyone, just cross him out, pardon him. A convict? Yes, a stroke of your pen and his name disappears in the files. The next roll call, no one will be looking for him. Who is it? Number 129. Curtis. Then he didn't just happen around your bungalow last night. How much does this man mean to you? He's my husband. Your husband? Yes. I realize what I'm asking you to do. I know your oath is a doctor and your duty to the law. But he's innocent, believe me. I love him and I believe in him. Please help me. Merrill Hammond is my friend. What's Mr. Hammond got to do with it? He's the governor and he's responsible. I'm sorry. I should have known it was too much to expect. Goodbye, doctor. No, oh, wait. You would risk your freedom for this man? Yes. You love him so much? Yes. But supposing it's discovered? But it won't be. There'll be a ship here tomorrow night. The escape is all arranged. All you have to do is report this man down with typhus suddenly, like these others. Late tomorrow, he dies. There are a couple of trusters that would help me take him out. I know you can do it. Dr. Brown. That would be better. I'm going to see number 129 now. In solitary. Anyway, I'm not much good here. They need a younger, tougher doctor on Karuba. You may stay here if you like. I'll be back soon. Bigamy. Now, I really ought to kill you. You might try it, Doctor. I could.
Now remember, tomorrow night you are to die. Thanks, Doc. Don't thank me. I'm doing this for your wife, you skunk. Hey, Doc. Got a cigarette? Hundreds. Thanks. Table from London, Mr. Hammond. Police records. What about? I asked for a marriage record of Miss Diana Bryce, and this is what they say. Marriage of Diana Bryce to Thomas Bentley in Paris, October 1939. Records show Diana Bentley, nee Diana Bryce, requested police to help locate missing husband. Stop. He was never located. Well? Well, that ties it up. Your Diana Bryce is the wife of convict 129. One two nine is dying of typhus. Dying? Where is he? Still in solitary. He got it late yesterday. I can't believe it. You want to see him? I'd like to see Miss Bryce's face when she hears this. When she hears what, Mr. Kent? You know that convict that liked your music and robbed you? Yes, of course. He's dying. Dying? How dreadful. I feel that it's my fault. Come along, Kent. You want to see him? Yes, I do. Perhaps I have to go, too. No, you better sit down. You look a little pale. I should have warned you about Doc's typhus shots. They make you feel a little wobbly for a day or so. Well, how do you feel? That's all right. Oh, that's all right. Oh, heck, you're What did he say? What the heck, you're He's delirious. Well, that's it. He's gone. Let's get outside. I'll lead two men to bury him tonight. Yes. Corporal. Sign two men to Dr. Brown, son of them. I'll have the cleanup squad do it. They're no good. They're all afraid of typhus. There are a couple of trusters, 346 and 379. They'll do. Assign 346 and 379. Yes, sir. Would you like to supervise it, Corporal? No, sir. I'll get it done right away. Yes. I'll see you later. Here comes the SS Mariposa. You know, the captain's held that tub together for 30 years by trading in and out of every port in the South Pacific. I'm surprised the war hasn't driven him to safer waters. Not him. Harold. Yes? 129 is dead. I was just there. That's too bad. There's a fog coming in. We'll be loading copra most of the night. Perhaps we'd better dine while we have the chance. Would you like to have dinner here with us? No, thank you. I think I'll walk a while, if you'll excuse me. Sure. Is he really dead? Yes. All right, let's get going with it. Haven't you got any shovels? Well, get back to the tool shed and get them. All right, come on, get out. Hurry. What do you want? I'm waiting for someone. I believe you are, too. Yes? Who? A man named Curtis. He'll be here soon. Well, I ain't got time. My ship's loaded with war cargo. That's more important to me. I have the money. Curtis is my husband. When are you sailing? In this fog, not till morning. Come on, come on, get me on board. Wait a minute. I ain't seen no money yet. I have it. Here. 
that ain't enough. I have these two. I don't know. It's pretty risky He's trying to sell his jewels. You dirty little crook. You made a bargain. I know I did. But I still say that ain't enough. Here's my ring, too. Well, that's better. You I've, robber. I've got your passport and your clothes. I'll go see if there's any guards around. Then I'll come back and row you to the ship. Well, hurry up. Get down below there. I'll get even with him. Say, what did it cost to bribe the doctor? Or did you do it with your dreamy eye? Some people don't need bribes. He wouldn't have taken anything. Then he's a sucker like I used to be. But no more. You watch me. We'll be rich. I'll get you anything you want. First, I'll get your rings and bracelets back from that dirty little crook if I have to beat him to a pulp. You made a bargain. I'll make a new one. My way. Dan. I'll have plenty of money. I'll take you anywhere you want to go. You could go to Paris. There's nothing in Paris for me. The police. I saw your records in the file. You're not the man I married. Ah, what's the difference? I love you and, and you love me. I thought I did. But now I can see you as you've always been. You'll come with me. I know you will. I've been a fool. You better have a drink, Henry. You look as though you needed it. I don't want a drink. Merrill, I've sold you out. How? Oh. It's number 129. He isn't dead. He's on that freighter. She's his wife, Merrill. I, I did it to help her. I helped Curtis get away. Henry, you're drunk. Well, for the first time in my life, I'm sober. Go to bed. You look like a seasick ghost. Go to bed and forget it. But, Merrill, you've got to listen to I me. I know. I understand. I have to have time to think it over. Boat doesn't sail till morning. Relax, Henry. Get some sleep. Did you send for Captain Sanchez? Yes, sir. He's waiting outside. Have him come in. Yes, sir. Send for me, Mr. Hammond? Yes, we got your clearance papers. Clearance papers? Oh, yes, sir, sure. Here they are, all in order. Did you load the Cobra? Yes, sir. Hmm. I see you have a very small crew. Yes, sir. Small ship, small crew, that's all that's necessary. Number of crew, 13. That's unlucky. Yes, sir. In these times, isn't everything unlucky? Hadn't you better sign on an extra man and make it 14? Just for good luck. Where could I find an extra man? Perhaps right here on the island. Yeah? Then if you do, you're liable to have trouble with the port authorities at the next port. Isn't that so? Yes, sir. They have to be rather strict about extra men from a penal colony. Yes, sir. So... Perhaps I better change this to number of crew 14. That ought to do it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sailing right away? Yes, sir. Right away. Quick. Safe voyage.
You may be interested to know that Miss Bryce is no longer on this island. Really? Where is she? With Curtis. With Curtis? You crazy? You know Curtis was buried last night. Maybe he was, but the only thing in his grave this morning was a sack. It's sailing. Yes, I know. I signed the manifest. Convict 129 is on that ship. And with him is your beautiful Miss Diana Bryce. I suppose so. I don't know about the lady. But I promise you that Curtis will be back in solitary within a week. I've cabled to the Port Authority of Sydney to arrest him. George, we seem to have been working at cross purposes for some time. Here's my resignation for your official signature. My official? I'm not the governor. No, George, but you will be. But you make a good one, too, if you're not too strict. Oh, no, Merrill, I can't let you do a thing like that. Chuck an important job just because... Well, because of a woman. I can understand how it happened. But she's gone now, and... We can carry on together. No, you do it alone, George. I'm through on Karuba. Try to get my old commission back from the Navy if they'll have me. Hello, Captain. What are you doing in here? I want the money and the jewelry. No, you don't. You made a bargain and you're sticking to it. Come on. Now, wait a minute. It cost me plenty for your passport. You're going to take a little loss on this deal. I am, huh? Help! That's the end of the rat. Well, this is a surprise. Your suspicions were right, Mr. Kent. I did come to this island to help a prisoner escape, and I've come back to be punished. Is Mr. Hammond in? No. He's gone. Yes. Here's his resignation. We've lost the finest man they've ever had on this island. He's given up his work, his future, everything. But he mustn't. Why? When a man's in love, it's hard telling what he'll do. In love? Certainly. Why do you suppose he made those sacrifices? Well, there he goes. You better hurry. Thank you, Mr. Kent. Thank you for everything, Doctor. I'm going to propose to Nurse Pauline. 